favorite things at the convention is to be able to get to meet new and young teachers. Uh, and, and what I noticed was that there weren't that many that year. And when I would talk, I would find that it was in large part it was because people had a hard time getting there. So the concern began to arise that people were joining the community, joining the, joining the organization. And so I went home and I was creating papers one night. And Kylie Beers that year had created a name for the event, the convention. And, uh, and so I created one in the time that it took me to take right between grade and papers. And what you have to do, as you see going on here, is you have to, if you're going to start, you have to begin to immediately grow the community. And what you do is you do that by invitations. And so you send out invitations to key people to, that will help you to do that work. Because it has to, you have to reach kind of that exponential sense so that a community begins to take on itself. Ideally, to take on such beautiful patterns as you see here, but, uh, but they, they don't grow their own initiative. And so what you do is you have to reach out to key people. In this case, the first person I sent the invitation to was my good friend, Carol Jago. And so Carol Jago is a person who comes with her own set of networks. And so when I sent it to Carol, and I say, Carol, send this, you know, send this link to thinkishcompanion.com out to your uh, California Reading Literature Project Network and your others. And then I send it to Alan Satomer, uh, who has all sorts of other wacky networks of, of authors and people that follow and love Alan's work as the, as the California State Teacher of the Year. And then I send it out to my colleague Morgan Halloran, who is working with student teachers at the school. And so that when Morgan gets, uh, you know, gets uh, a new student teacher that comes in, then it extends beyond Morgan to the student teachers at Stanford, and so it begins to radiate out. And so you have a community that grows. There's the accidental things. So when I first created the name, the idea was, well, this is just going to be for new teachers, except then by the by, you know, late night, by the first night, I begin to get an, an email from a, from a li fifth grade librarian in New Zealand saying, I'd like to join. And I'm thinking, well, why wouldn't I want her to join? Uh, so what you see is the network begins to grow as you see the first people begin to join. And you see it evolve. So Karen Obante uh, is down there in the middle of that, that screen. And so it's grown from four years ago to, to it'll, it'll hit 40,000 before the end of, the, before the end of, of uh, December. So it grows at about 10,000 a year. So, but a community has to have a way to define itself. So I spent a lot of time trying to think about what we should put at the top. So this idea of a slogan where English teachers go to help each other. And so I spent a, a, a remarkable amount of time for that. And then uh, you've got to have things that when people come there, they find that it helps them solve the problems that they're facing, right? So in the way that some of the other speakers said, it can be a community that responds to them. So whether it's posting uh, their own forum and saying, I need, I need help in this, or whether it's opening up a group that can go on, on, you know, on uh, in continuation over time that people can contribute to, or whether it's setting up the first book group, the first book online book club, which um, we weren't sure quite how that would work. We weren't sure if people would want to join in that, especially when it's about something as exciting as rethinking rubrics. Except Maya Wilson's book is an amazing book, and Maya, I knew, had you know she'd actually started that book before it became a book idea as a bunch of writing online. And so I knew that Maya had the energy to be able to grow. She's a very fiery personality. Uh, and so then, we, so then what happens is you begin to get a, the community kind of picks up, picks up and gathers some its own momentum and begins to kind of give you a sense of you know. Where else can we go with this? What would the meeting allow us to do? And so we started with the idea of, uh, of the English companion name uh, web substitute, and then you begin to create a space that others want to come into because then they begin to see you as a vehicle to help them achieve their own ends. So I didn't use, in fact, uh, create the web substitute. That was other people in the community coming and saying, we want to do this, can we do this? And so it's never been my community. 